Hey, I'm sure you've seen microscopic images like this before, but have you ever wondered how these images are made? Of course you have, everybody does. In this video I will show you how these images are made, but before we go into the details, let's take an example. In this image you can see brain cells in the brain region called the thalamus. I think you can guess that naturally these cells do not glow in green and red. We have to make them glow somehow, but how we do that? First we have to take a special chemical called a tracer to label a set of neurons. These are the green ones in the picture. The other one, the red group of cells, contain a protein called carotenin. This occurs naturally in the brain, but of course it doesn't glow in red. In this experiment we want to know whether these two group of cells, the green and the red ones, overlap. To reveal that we have to label these cells and for that we have to go to the lab. I don't want to go into the details, but first we have to take a fixed mouse brain, like this. This is approximately the size of a peanut and we are going to cut it into 150 extremely thin slices. When I say extremely thin, it means 50 micrometers, which is thinner than a hair. Now we can start dyeing these slices. For this we use the immune system. In a nutshell, the immune system can produce so-called immune goblins that specifically bind to different molecules, we call these antigens. We use special immune goblins that bind to the molecules we want to see in our brain samples. For example, the tracer we used earlier to label our samples, or the protein called carotene. These immune goblins are special because they have colorful molecules attached to them. Basically, we use these colorful molecules to see what we want to see in our samples. Technically, we wash the slices and then put them in the bath of immunoglobulins for a few hours. By the way, this whole process is called fluorescent immunohistochemistry, a very basic technique in neuroscience. When we are finished, we mount the samples on glass slides and then we can go to the microscope room. So we are in the microscope room and this is a confocal microscope specifically designed to take images of fluorescent samples like the one we just made. The theory behind the whole thing is that these colorful molecules we attach to our samples only glow if we shine appropriate coral light on them. For example, if we shine blue light on the sample, only the green molecule will glow and the red one doesn't. On the other hand, if we shine green light on the samples, only the red molecule will glow and the other one doesn't. So, we just put our sample in the microscope, adjust the settings, and then the software captures what we need. And basically, we are done. Now we have the microscopic images on hand, and we can move on to analyze them, but that's a different story. So, to wrap things up, we wanted to see where these two molecules, the tracer and the protein called carotene, are localized in the brain. To do that, first we label these molecules with special immunoglobulins and then we use fluorescence in the confocal microscope to capture fluorescent microscopic images and later we could analyze them. So now you know how fluorescent microscopic images are made. I was Akos Babitsky from Budapest, Hungary. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share it so I can get more views. Thanks. Cheers.